for legal reasons, the Contingly Fairies cannot be shown in this list, even if it was intended to be included. This is due to the Science and Society Picture Library asserting exclusive rights to license the use of the images. We apologize for any inconvenience. With the advent of digital photography, anonymous pictures have become more rare. High-definition cameras in Photoshop have rendered most modern, mysterious photographs to be either entirely explainable or utterly debunkable. Back in the past, pictures were captured on film, and computers were not available to doctor photography. Images captured were much more difficult to manipulate, and thus, many mysterious and unexplainable photos ended up being taken. While the images began to spread throughout the web, a lot of untold answers remain, and this is where we bring you the top 12 mysterious photos revealed. Creature in the Rock Crevice This photo is claimed to be some sort of creature in the rock crevice. The story was that John Smith went to Saudi Arabia on a business trip and met a fellow businessman who said he had seen some sort of flash in a dark cave and snapped a picture, and this is the picture that came out. John obtained a copy of the picture and brought it back to England in search of a buyer. However, it turned out that the creature was actually part of a tourist attraction called Cheddar Show Caves in Somerset, England, which contained an attraction called Crystal Quest. Crystal Quest is a dark cave full of Tolkien-esque carvings, intimately lit by strobe light. Cheddar officials confirmed this and noted that many people had taken pictures of strange things in the cave after seeing a flash of light and pointed their camera at it. You can still see the creature statue there. White Lady of Warstead In 1975, Diane and Peter Berthelot, along with their 12-year-old son, visited the Warstead Church in North Norfolk, England. Peter took a photo of his wife sitting and praying on one of the church benches. Until they looked back at the photo, it appeared some sort of figure was seen behind Mrs. Berthelot wearing light-coloured old-fashioned clothes and a bonnet. The Berthelots returned to Warstead Church the next summer with the photo and showed it to the Reverend. He said that the ghost is a healer who appears when someone near them is in need of healing. When she visited the church at the time, Diane was ill in health and was taking antibiotics. As you can see, the image is not photoshopped or doctored in any way. Unfortunately, what they have captured on camera was not a ghost, but in fact another person caught in overexposure by the sun. You can see the dark part of the thighs at the bottom of the glowing white body. Below Mrs. Berthelot, you can see a dark area which appears to be someone's feet, as it is not aligned with the feet of the pew. Finally, the glowing body is just someone who is sitting in the sun and the photo is overexposed. If you look at the ground between the first and second feet of the pew that the white lady is sitting on, you can see the ground is also glowing like the person sitting behind Mrs. Berthelot due to overexposure. Brown Lady of Raynham Hall One of the most famous poltergeist photos is the Brown Lady Ghost, who is the spirit of Lady Dorothy Townsend, a resident of Raynham Hall in Norfolk, England. The Townsend ghost is said to haunt the old oak staircase of the property and was allegedly seen standing beside King George IV as he awoke one night. The photo was snapped in September 1936 by photographers that were assigned to take pictures of Raynham Hall for magazine Country Life. Now, there are two theories on here on why the photo does not show a ghost. Our first theory is that the camera used to take the image could have leaked light into the plate, hence explaining the sunlight shown at the very top of the picture. Secondly, the image could have been two negatives put together. If you look very closely at this statue of St. Mary, standing on a globe, and see the original image, you can faintly see some sort of connection. Poltergeist of SS Watertown Two crewmen were cleaning the cargo tank during a voyage to Panama Canal in 1924 when the pair died from inhalation of poisonous gas. Following tradition, the pair were buried at sea shortly after, just off the coast of Mexico. In the days after the burial, the faces of the two sailors were reportedly seen by many surviving crewmates in the waves of the ocean. The vessel's captain informed his employers of the strange sightings and took snaps of what he saw, spotting a pair of faces appearing in the waters. Recent investigations conducted by the Centre for Inquiry suggest that the ghostly faces are in fact a hoax. After extensive research, three copies of the photograph were published. 
One of the original images published in Reader's Digest Mysteries of the Unexplained showed signs of photographic skullduggery, where several images might have been put together after undergoing cutting and pasting. Adding to this, we looked into the history of the writer of the myth, Michael G. Mann, who published one of the original ghost tale stories and found that Mann was in fact a prankster and had previously doctored fake UFO images. Ghost of Lord Combermere This photo was taken in 1891 in the library of Combermere Abbey at Sybil Corbett. This figure of a bearded man appears to be seated in the chair to the left of the image. Paranormal believers contend the image to show the poltergeist of Combermere, a distinguished British cavalry commander that lived during the 19th century. Lord Combermere died after being struck down by a horse-drawn carriage in 1891. At that time, Corbett took the photo, and Combermere's funeral was taking place at a location four miles from the abbey. It's reported that the photographic exposure took around an hour. In attempting to explain the image, some speculated that a servant had entered the room and sat down in the chair, thereby resulting in the transparent outline of a person. The members of the household outright refused these suggestions, saying that all of the staff were in attendance at Combermere's funeral while the photo was being shot. Nonetheless, with such a lengthy exposure time, many researchers consider there have been a lengthy time for someone to have entered the room unnoticed and distorted the final photo. The Hook Island Sea Monster this classic image is widely discussed along cryptozoological literature, first appeared in print in March of 1965. The photo is of a huge tadpole-like creature encountered in Stonehaven Bay, Hook Island in Queensland, taken by photographer Robert Lee Sarek. On December 12, 1964, Lee Sarek's wife spied a strange object on the lagoon floor. It proved to be a gigantic tadpole-like creature, estimated about 30 feet long. They took several still photos, gradually moving closer. Eventually, Lacerik and Dijon plucked up the courage to approach it underwater in order to film it. According to Robert, it didn't move, and they suspected that it may be dead. But just as they began to film, it opened its mouth and made movements towards them. While there have been no solid reports of large sea creatures in shallow waters other than the oarfish and blanket octopus, it's been revealed that the event was hoaxed by Robert Lesserick. Thoughts suggest that he used a weighted down plastic sheeting to create the illusion of a large sea snake. Mars Faces in 1976, NASA's Viking 1 spacecraft was circling Mars, snapping photos of possible landing sites for the spacecraft Viking 2, when it spotted the shadowy likeness of a human face. An enormous head nearly two miles from end to end seemed to be staring back at the cameras from a region of the red planet called Syndonia. Despite the apparent clarity of the face, NASA was quick to explain that the image was nothing more than an optical illusion. Shadows caused by the angle of the sun were merely creating the illusion of eyes and nose and mouth across a natural formation according to scientists. True believers were equally quick to fire back. NASA was trying to cover up the evidence of life on Mars. Once photographic imaging techniques had improved, scientists went in again for a closer shot. In April 1998, the Mars orbiter captured a picture 10 times sharper than the original photos. In these more detailed pictures, what had appeared to be eyes, nose and a mouth vanished into nothing more than what we call natural rock formation. Time Travelling Hipster People believe that this photograph taken in 1941 at the reopening of the South Forks Bridge in Goldbridge, Canada depicted a man in seemingly modern dress style with a camera that was well advanced beyond its time. The image is not photoshopped and the original can be found at the Bradlawn Pioneer Museum in British Columbia, Canada. People have pointed out that the logo on the modern shirt worn by the man in the image is probably that of the Montreal Maroons hockey team, which existed until 1938. Thus, it would seem more likely to see someone wearing that shirt in 1940 than by today's standards. Sunglasses with side shades were common in the 1940s as even actress Barbara Stanwyck was wearing a similar pair in her 1944 film Double Indemnity. So, these would not have been unusual. 
The camera in the man's hands is not clear, but Kodak Company did have similar models at the time. You can also see a camera in the hands of the first man standing in front of the vehicle. The remainder of his clothing would appear to have been available at the time, though his clothes are far more casual than those worn by the other individuals in the photograph. Casual attire aside, the time-travelling hipster is not out of place. Everything he was wearing was available at the time and fits with the period. Battle of LA The Battle of Los Angeles occurred during the night of 24th to 25th February 1942, with this photo proven. It's claimed to be one of the few unexplained UFO phenomena. Japanese planes had previously bombed Pearl Harbor, and the country was still reeling from the unexpected attack. There was widespread speculation that the West Coast was going to be next. To make matters worse, a Japanese submarine had surfaced near Santa Barbara and shelled an oil field the day before. Anti-aircraft batteries along the West Coast were on high alert, and crews were told to be on the lookout for anything unusual. At 3.16 a.m., air raid sirens sounded throughout Los Angeles County, the anti-aircraft batteries went crazy, firing shells and machine guns at reported aircrafts from Santa Monica to Culver City. Over 1,400 rounds were fired during the alert. The vigorous shelling was witnessed by thousands on the ground. A photo taken by a Los Angeles Times photographer on the night of the incident is often used by the UFO crowd to argue that it's evidence of a saucer-shaped UFO trapped in multiple searchlight beams. However, the original image was heavily modified before printing. In the retouched version, many light beams were lightened and widened with white paint, while other beams were eliminated. In earlier years, it was common for newspapers to use artists to retouch the images due to poor reproduction qualities. Before and after comparisons of the notorious photo show that separate round spots of light seen where the beams converge, most likely lens flares, were modified with blobs of white paint, inadvertently creating an impression of an object trapped in the beams. The most logical explanation appears to be that weather balloons were to blame. In 1983, the Office of Air Force History concluded that meteorological balloons had likely triggered the event. Weather balloons were released from each of the dozen anti-aircraft positions around the city every six hours. The balloons were illuminated from below by an enclosed candle which would reflect off the silver lining of the balloon itself to ensure that it was visible at night. A memo to President Roosevelt from the Army stated that there was no evidence of bombs being dropped, troop casualties reported, or planes shot down. The President's response was to suspect that the power to order an air alarm should be restricted to U.S. Army officials. Solway Firth Astronaut this photo of Elizabeth Templeton was taken on May 4, 1964 by her dad, Jim Templeton, in Berg Marsh Cumberman, United Kingdom. Jim, his wife, and three daughters went on a picnic that day, bringing along his new camera. He took one photo of his young daughter, and after getting them developed, there appeared to have been a tall spaceman in full astronaut gear standing behind her, except there wasn't anyone else around while they were there. Even Kodak verified that it was not tampered with. The famous spaceman illusion was created when Jim's wife Annie Templeton inadvertently photobombed the snapshot with her back to the camera walking away from the child. Others observed that another photograph taken that day showed Templeton's wife Annie wearing a very light blue sleeveless dress. Closer examination of the original spaceman image reveals that the arm of the mysterious figure has a decidedly tapering feminine curve to it. With her back to the camera, she's probably wearing some kind of white cap over her closed cropped hairstyle. Now, Jim probably never saw her due to the blind spot in the Pentagon F SLR camera's viewfinder that only allowed him to see 70% of what the lens was capturing. This is backed up by the other photo taken that day that shows his wife, again caught in Templeton's blind spot. There was no one else with them that day, and he really didn't see anything other than his daughter when he took the photo and the photograph wasn't manipulated, faked, or staged in any way. Templeton may have been honestly puzzled by the photo, at least initially. It's hard to imagine Templeton never discovered his camera's notorious blind spot. 
It's also quite possible that Templeton was fully aware that his chance photo mistake had created a perfect opportunity for mass misinterpretation. But maybe he enjoyed the attention so much caused from the photo, and maybe even promoted it over the years. The Loch Ness Monster Robert Wilson claimed that he took this photograph early in the morning on April 19, 1934, while driving along the northern shore of Loch Ness. He said that he noticed something moving in the water and stopped his car to take a photo. For decades, this photo was considered to be the very best evidence of the existence of a sea monster in the loch, but Wilson himself refused to have his name associated with it. Therefore, it simply came to be known as the surgeon's photo. For years, skeptics were sure that the photo was somehow a hoax, but no rigorous studies of the image were conducted until 1984 when Stuart Campbell analyzed the photo in a 1984 article in the British Journal of Photography. Campbell concluded that the object in the water could have only been two or three feet long, at most, and that probably was an otter or a marine bird. He suggested it was likely that Wilson knew this was the case. But as it turned out, Campbell was wrong. The object in the water was not a form of marine life. It was a toy submarine outfitted with a sea serpent head. This was revealed in 1994 when Christian Sperling, before his death at the age of 90, confessed his involvement in a plot to create the famous surgeon's photo, a plot that involved both Marmaduke Wetherell and Colonel Wilson. According to Sperling, he had been approached by Wetherell, his stepfather, who wanted him to make a convincing serpent model. Sperling did this, and the model was then photographed in the Loch Ness. This picture was given to Wilson, and whose job it was to serve as a credible frontman for the hoax. Black Knight Satellite This photo is one of several observations made by some of the first man-made satellites in 1960, reporting unidentified objects in polar orbit, something that neither the US nor Russia were capable of at the time. Several pictures of this strange objects have since gone viral across the internet. The Black Knight satellite is supposedly an alleged object orbiting Earth in near polar orbit that UFOologists and fringe authors believe is approximately 13,000 years old and of extraterrestrial origin. Rumors are that Nikola Tesla was the first man to intercept a signal from this otherworldly satellite in 1899 after building a high-voltage radio device in the Colorado Springs. After Tesla's discovery in the next 30 to 50 years, the signal was apparently intercepted more frequently until it was apparently decoded. It is more likely, though, that what Tesla detected was not the Black Knight, but instead signals which are emitted from natural objects, such as pulsars, which are fast-spinning neutron stars which emit a rhythmic signal the crew of Space Shuttle Orbiter Endeavour also photographed an unusual object in low Earth orbit. These images are often labeled as the most definitive proof of this satellite. However, on more careful analysis, this strange structure seems more likely like a piece of space debris. In actual fact, this black object is probably a thermal blanket that has become dislodged during an EVA. Mission STS-88 was the first American mission to begin construction of the International Space Station. The Russians had already planned the Zarya module in orbit, so this mission was to connect Zarya to the American Unity module. The crew achieved all objectives of their mission, including installing handrails and testing a safety device to prevent astronauts from drifting into space should they become detached. However, there were a few problems along the way. Initial alignment of the modules didn't go according to plan, so the shuttle's robotic arm loosened its grip to try again. Several items floated away, including the thermal blanket covering, which is what the mysterious image captured in the photo appears to be. The only known name of Black Knight refers to a British rocket used to test the design of a re-entry vehicle for the Blue Streak missile between 1958 and 1965. The Black Knight satellite is a jumble of completely unrelated stories, reports of unusual science observations, authors promoting fringe ideas, 
classified spy satellites, and people over-interpreting photos. These ingredients have chopped up, stirred together, and stewed on the internet to one giant flurry of a myth.